What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and for today I wanted to answer one of the questions that I know a lot of you guys are going to have in regards to this new check-in event right here. As you guys can see today we got our first of what is going to be three six-star selectors followed by a tier two advancement selector as well. Now this is not something that happens often at all so I know a lot of the newer players are going to want to make the most out of this. This is not really going to help the majority of the people who've been playing for a long time like myself because for me personally I only have five characters that are not completely decked out and none of them can be chosen from the selectors however I still wanted to try and help out as much as possible so I want to give you guys my thought process and the characters that I would prioritize if I was in your position where I was still building my roster which characters would I use these six star selectors on and which ones I would consider giving the tier 2 advancement to as well so I got my first selector and it's currently sitting in my inventory right here personally for me what I'm gonna do with them is since all of my characters are already six stars I'm just gonna stack up bios for characters who have uniforms that I eventually want to work on that is it but to be honest with you guys that's probably not the best way to go about it so if you're new and you're trying to build your roster these are the characters that I want to recommend to you I'm gonna leave you with a top 10 list and also I'm gonna give you a top 5 list for the ones that you should really and truly consider if you want to make the most out of that tier 2 selector okay as you can see not every single character in the game is inside the selector obviously no mutants no premium characters and there's also no ultimates so a lot of the characters that people really and truly wanted were excluded from this list obviously because netmarble doesn't want to lose money even if it's literally giving you guys three premium characters they don't want to do that so a lot of the good, really good choices were eliminated, but there's still some jewels in these selectors. So for you guys, I decided to make this video a little bit shorter and I highlighted the ones that you guys should really and truly consider. Now, if I had to rank these characters from 10 to 1, I would most definitely give Silk the number 10 spot because even without her uniform, she's a beast for PvP and PvE because of the crowd control and the survivability. Her damage is not top tier. That is why I kind of leave her at number 10. But overall, she's a very, very good character that should definitely be high up there on your priorities if you're still building your roster. Number 9 for me would actually be the Wasp because she's a great character. Also, a character that doesn't have have great dps but she has amazing survivability and she's the kind of character that would slowly chip you apart and if you use your tier 2 ticket to get her to tier 2 she's definitely going to be one of the best characters one of the most useful characters in the freaking game a character that i literally use every week another character that i have to put on this list is going to be someone like robbie reyes another character that is very very easy to use has lots of survivability via iframe and a guard dps is not the greatest but in terms of ease of use and survivability robbie reyes definitely does it for me okay another character that i have to put on this list is medusa Medusa, another one that is very easy to use, good leadership, and she doesn't have the highest level of DPS, but still a very, very good character, one that you should most definitely pick up. Another character that I have to put on here is actually Mantis, guys. Because of the fact that she has amazing survivability, she's very, very easy to use, and she also has amazing CC with the fear on her four skill. A very dominant character in stuff like Alliance Conquest, Battle World, and even, I would say, Timeline Battle if you're still in Silver and Bronze. Even at tier one a very very good character so most definitely one that if you don't have you should definitely consider especially since she cannot be farmed outside of selectors okay so definitely a really good character holding down the number six spot for me is actually mantis number five is actually going to be titania on this list very good character overall very good kit with damage block iframes good damage very very good leadership and she's a super villain so most definitely one that you should think about investing in very early on number four on this list is actually claw a very good character a surprising character for me since he's not really a top tier villain in the comics i was not expecting him to be as good as he is but best believe he's a very very good character even at tier one he has good survivability great dps and on top of that if you get him to tier two he also doubles as a support character so definitely a good character holding down the number four spot for me and number three on this list guys has to be one of my personal favorite characters in a very long time and that is shuri guys a character that is so much fun to play so dominant in basically any game mode and on top of that she can also be used as a support character a support role doesn't really fit the character even though she has a very good support passive and the reason why i say that is because even by herself 
Like she is so freaking dominant. So putting her in a support role for me is pretty hard to do because she's so good. She's great for World Boss, great for Shadowland. She's just overall a very, very good character, man. So if you don't have her, if there's one character that you should really and truly consider, from this is Shuri. I love playing her base kit without the uniform, but with the uniform, she's even more dominant. A very tanky character with really good DPS. She's good for basically anything, okay? So yeah, Shuri holding on to number three spot. Number two for me is actually the Prince of Lies, man, Loki. Okay, very good character. If you get the latest uniform for him, he can do virtually anything. However, keep him out of PvP. Anything else, he is truly freaking amazing. I cannot say enough about how useful Loki is in this game. One of the most fundamentally useful characters, okay? And the number one character in this entire list needs no introduction, guys. Sharon freaking Rogers. The best, literally the best bio sub character you could pick up from this, okay? She is truly amazing. If you suck at this game and you're kind of like me and you make a lot of mistakes when you're playing, go ahead and pick up Sharon Rogers. There is nothing, I say it again, there is nothing in this game that Sharon Rogers cannot do, okay? She is freaking amazing. World boss, Shadowland, Alliance battle, PvP, doesn't matter. Sharon Rogers can do it all, okay? So if you suck at this game or you're just not that good yet, she is a very, very good character for you to get in there and get a whole lot of practice in because she can take a beating and she can most definitely dish it out, okay? So two characters that I want to throw in as a bonus here is Yellow Jacket because he's very easy to use and he has great DPS. But I also want to throw in a character that is really and truly only useful for her leadership, and that is She-Hulk. She has one of the most used leaderships currently in Marvel Future Fight. When it comes to PvE content, She-Hulk is on virtually any team that you see that you go up against male characters, okay? And that is basically her only purpose right now in the game. Very sad because I would like to be able to use her on her own, but she's just not that good. She doesn't have any kind of survivability and her DPS on her own is very low. But she has one of the best leaderships in the game. So I have to put her here, guys. And on top of that, she's very hard to farm for. So got to put her here, even though you can now farm for her using tokens. But she's still a really good pickup from here if you have all of the other characters or at least the top five characters that I chose. But definitely make sure you consider Sharon Rogers for your tier two ticket you consider someone like Shuri for your tier two ticket because that's gonna help you both offensively when you're using other characters in the lead for stuff like War Boss Ultimate. If you have other teams and you just need a little bit more damage out of your character, Shuri's tier two passive will definitely help you there. Another character who could really help you at tier two would be someone like Loki for Super Giant Day when it comes to War Boss Ultimate. Another character that would be really, really good for you at tier two would actually be Wasp because of her tier two passive for stuff like Timeline to help you get a little bit more crystals. A last character right here would actually be Claw. I know, surprising, but Claw for me is a very good character, one of them on the tier two very, very soon because I think he's very, very good. If you don't have the top tier characters like Doctor Strange or even Magneto or Cable for Blast Day, this guy can get you over 100k in ABX even at tier one. And in at tier two, his tier two passive allows him to be used as a support type as well. So very, very useful character, one that I highly recommend that you guys use, okay? And guys, I know I left out some pretty good characters, people like Black Panther in his latest uniform, people like Spider-Man in his hobo uniform, people like Black Bolt once he gets his tier two passive, but I didn't really wanna focus on too many story mission characters because of the fact that they come at half the cost and that is really and truly not making the most out of your selector. I also didn't want to focus on characters that rely too heavily on their uniforms so I didn't want to put people like Hulk in my top 10 because Hulk actually really truly needs his Ragnarok uniform to be a force to be reckoned with. Same goes for Red Hulk. He really needs his latest uniform if he wants to be a contender. Without it he's really and truly not that good. Okay guys people like Groot 
who, to be honest with you guys, Groot really earns his stripes when he gets his tier 2 passive. And the same goes for people like Destroyer. So that's why they didn't make my list this time around. However, guys, let me know what your top 10 looks like. Because not everyone is going to want to rock with the same characters that I have. So maybe if you guys can put together a top 10 list and put that in the comments, that could also help out a newer player. And we could all just together hopefully help as much people as possible. Possible. So that's all for this one guys. Like always, thank you so much for watching. Till next time boys. Peace out. I forgot how <laughs> Destroyer looked without his uniform. Like looking at it now, he just looks so basic. <laughs> but yeah guys, I'm out.